Well, very good morning. We are gathering virtually again uh, uh, to celebrate the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, and uh, we are into that long, uh, long season after Pentecost where we really spend time hopefully growing in our faith, and uh, I hope that uh, that, that is, is part of your, uh, your life and your prayers and everything else. We begin our service on page 47 in your green books, if you got them. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is in his holy temple. O come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his, ca in his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is in his holy temple. Oh, come, let us worship. We continue with the 13th Psalm. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have perplexity in my mind and grief in my heart day after day? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemy say I have prevailed over him, and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your mercy. My heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt richly with me. I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Abraham! Here I am. Take Isaac, your only son, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering, on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. And he split wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son and he took his hand in his hand the fire and the knife so the two of them walked on together So the two of them walked on together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood, and bound his son Isaac, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Abraham, Abraham. Here I am. Do not stretch out your hand against Isaac, and do nothing to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham raised his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram, 
and offered him up for a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham called the name of that place the Lord will provide. And it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it will be provided. By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Indeed, I will greatly bless you, and I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the ward of the righteous person. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The word of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. My dad loves the show Just for Laughs Gags. In the show, they play a, a prank on, an uns, on unsuspecting members of the public and then reveal what actually happened in the camera location, but only after a horrified or hilarious response to the situation. There's a, one gag where they had put a doll in, in a stroller in place of a, a real baby, and a woman pretended to be crouched down looking after the baby. As, as, a, as a person just passed by, she stopped the person and asked them to hang the shopping bag that was sitting on the bench nearby on the handle of the stroller. Now the bag's heavy, and it tips the stroller over immediately. And the reaction of the people who have done it is shock and horror, because it topples over so fast they think they may have hurt the baby inside. After that initial response, the woman prankster stands up and, and reveals that it's just a doll and points to where the camera is, and everyone has a good laugh. I think that's sometimes how people look at the story of Abraham and Isaac and God that, the, that was, was shared by the kids this morning. God asks Abraham to sacrifice his son, his only son, the son he loves as a burnt offering. And then just before it happens, God stops it and reveals another way and points to the camera. The trouble, though, with seeing it that way is that this isn't harmless like the pranks on, on Just for Laughs. This was really life and death. A real knife, a real fire, and a real child. Now, we know it all works out because we've heard the story before, and that's why we have the, the freedom to approach this story in this way. The problem for Abraham, though, was that he's like those unsuspecting people that are being pranked. He has no way to know what's going to happen. And so there's no way to hear this request from God as anything other than horrifying. Abraham's response, though is to go along with it. And if you think about it in that way, you see that this is a horrifying story. And Abraham's response is really very troubling. He is willing to sacrifice his son to God, the son through whom God's promise was supposed to be fulfilled. It makes absolutely no sense. Now, the other problem with seeing this as kind of a harmless gag is what that says about God. Either God is a passive-aggressive jerk up in heaven that is testing to see if Abraham is really as committed as he should be before stopping it all, or God is a sadistic bully who's playing chicken with Isaac's life. 
Neither of those are consistent with what we see of God in the scriptures and what we know of God in our own lives. And so I think we need to find a a new way to approach this particular reading. I want to suggest that this is not a story about obedience. I think it's instead about trust. This test is not meant for, for God to see Abraham's faith. I think it's meant to to help Abraham see his lack of trust in God. He should trust God because God has blessed him richly and come through with with everything that was promised to Abraham and kept him safe and prosperous throughout. God has been there consistently for Abraham. So there's all sorts of reasons to actually trust God. But Abraham really doesn't. And we see that at different points in Abraham's life. Abraham lies about his relationship with Sarah twice and allows her to become part of a harem twice, even though they're married. And that's so that he can avoid the risk of someone harming him instead of trusting God to get them through that situation. Abraham also hedges his bets and sleeps with his, slave, with his wife's slave in order to produce a son instead of trusting that God will come through on the promise. Here again in our story this morning, I think we can see Abraham's distrust. He doesn't trust God to be God, to be generous and kind and loving and merciful and faithful. Abraham blindly acquiesces to a horrifying request for a human sacrifice. Why not push back respectfully? Why not ask God why? Why not say no? Why not tell God that this makes no sense with the promise that God has made? Why go along with something that is clearly horrifying and wrong? If Abraham really trusted God, Abraham could have asked the question of God or objected to God and known that God loved him enough not to destroy him. Abraham didn't trust God, I don't think. I think Abraham feared God. And that's why he was willing to blindly obey and do something he should never even consider. The reality of any relationship of trust is that you can have difficult conversations without worrying about it destroying your life. It means you can ask questions without fear. It means you can can engage in a discussion and not just blindly do what someone says. Had Abraham really trusted God, he would have engaged with God and asked God what was going on, because sacrificing Isaac made no sense at all, and it was totally out of step with with the nature of God. God is not the kind of God that wants people to to shut their brains off and and stop thinking. And neither is God the kind of God that can't take being asked questions. Our psalm this morning was a case in point. It was absolutely loaded with questions for God. Now, fortunately, God's too good to allow Abraham's lack of trust to take Isaac's life. And so God offered a substitute. God is not the kind of God that that desires human sacrifice. Abraham recognized that in that moment. He recognized what God had done with relief, and so he named the place that where it all happened, God will provide. It seems to me that lack of trust in God is at the heart of much of what has ailed humanity from the, from the very beginning to now. The questions that, that we ask in life can point to that sometimes. Oftentimes, our our questions revolve around something like, what if there's not enough for me? Can we afford to protect creation, or will it wreck the economy? Can we afford to, to support those people, or will they just become a drain? Can we afford to, to give others power, or will it render me powerless? When we're worried about whether there's enough, we're living in fear. And then often we're, we're willing to sacrifice others 
for our own security. We're willing to to sacrifice those living in low-lying areas of the world so we can keep driving and buying cheap products. We're willing to sacrifice poor people, old people, sick people, and children to keep our taxes down. We're willing to, to sacrifice black people, indigenous people, immigrants, and refugees to keep our influence and protect our privileged place in the world. We are very much like Abraham and many others between that time and now. We don't really trust God. The thing is, God has never, not once, not ever, said there may not be enough or there won't be enough. What we see again and again throughout the scriptures, what we see again and again in our own experience is that God will provide. We can trust God. We can live without fear. We can live without sacrificing others. A reduction in carbon emissions will not destroy everything, plunging us into an economic pit of despair. A guaranteed basic income will not spontaneously destroy all human ambition and initiative. Making room for people of all sorts to exercise their gifts and explore their possibilities will not suddenly crowd out those who can already those who can already do that it is a lie to suggest that there is not enough but people keep saying that we know different abraham knew different and we can choose to live different God will provide. We can stop sacrificing others. God will provide. We can trust God because we know God provides. Thanks be to God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for the Church, for Todd, our Bishop, for our brothers and sisters throughout the world, for our St. Mark's family, that all the faithful would trust God and would live in that trust with generosity, with love, and with grace. Let us pray for the leaders of the the nations. Let us pray that they would strive for justice and peace, that they would share the goods of the world, that they would make decisions that are good and right for the whole of creation. Let us pray for our world. Let us pray for an end to the suffering caused by natural disaster, poverty, war and injustice, hate and discrimination. Let us pray that all people throughout the earth can live and live abundantly to the glory of God. Let us pray for our local community, for St. Clair Beach and Tecumseh, Windsor and all of Essex County. Let us pray for all our neighbors and especially those neighbors who are working on our behalf. Let us pray for those who are also just going back to work now and pray that God would would watch over all of us, that God would protect all of us, that God would keep us safe and healthy in all we do. Let us pray for those who are in need of our prayers, for the sick, the suffering, the lonely, the depressed, the mentally ill, 
and the addicted. Let us pray for all those who are on our hearts at this time. Let us pray that God would send healing grace into their lives and that God would lift them out of all of their difficulty and restore them to the fullness of health and well-being. Let us pray for those who have died. And let us pray for those who mourn. Let us pray that they would trust God and find the peace that passes all understanding through their relationship with God. Finally, let us pray for ourselves. Let us pray that we would trust our God, that we would trust God's love and goodness and turn away from abhor abhorrent acts that hold others down or hold them back. Let us pray that God would enable us to share the love that we find in God. We pray all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love fulfills the law. May we love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. And may we love our neighbor as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, just before our, uh, our final uh, uh, post-service music, um, I want to extend thanks to those who, uh, who participated in the service this morning. I want to thank the, uh, the kids and Jane and Nellie. That was uh, Jacob and Rebecca and Madison along with Jane and Nellie for, uh, for bringing that, uh, that first Old Testament story to life for us. Um, and I want to thank Carolyn for, for her uh, um, reading this morning as well. On top of that, thank you to Andrea for, uh, for continuing to, uh, to inspire us and help us with, uh, with music every week. And uh, it is very much appreciated and it's, uh, it's a wonderful way of, uh, of connecting with folks uh, even if we can't, uh, can't be together physically. Thank you also for your incredible support and your prayers and, uh, and for uh, continuing to invest in the life of the church even though you, you can't uh, join us here on site. Um, if there is any need out there, please be in touch with the church. We have lots of resources and we can, uh, we can certainly help. Um, and uh, I do want to say thank you to those who, uh, who helped out and supported that uh, June 27th miracle yesterday. Um, I know that uh, that, that food will, uh, will certainly be well used and, uh, and it will certainly be a relief to, uh, to members of our community that are struggling at the moment. We have a Bible study Thursday morning, of course, and uh, if you can join us, please do. Um, and uh, if you uh, need some help with that, please be in touch with me and I'll, uh, I'll get you all set up. In the meantime, stay home as much as you can, and, uh, but do please enjoy some new freedom, but enjoy it safely, all right? And uh, please also stay in touch with each other. That is a wonderful way for us to, to love our neighbors is by, by being in touch on the phone or, or in whatever way, okay? The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen.